You know, I uh, kind of tend to think the show is a bit less about copyright and enforcement, but there could actually be a disagreement here. I think you're more interested in me than in the... I look at the copyright issues, and I look at, the, at them as far as the... Uh, uh, parlance are concerned to do with you know if you if you find a place where free software is affected uh, and the FSF something gets involved in these copyright fights uh, then you do want to cover these issues and to explain to people that they have to care about things like takedowns and three strikes and torrents and things like that because it does affect the distribution of software this is why quite a few free software groups not just the FSF do get involved and do get emotionally involved and actively involved in communicating these these issues with people. Uh, what you have is the uh, certain companies trying to restrict or to make more scarce the available uh, media to people. Uh, when I say media, it's usually like audiovisual. Uh, when it comes to software, it's like code, but the code can be like GUIs and behavior, so it's kind of it's kind of similar, but you have people involved in creating and scripting certain things uh, and trying to sell copies of these things or trying to uh, have people download as many as possible. So the difference is between the person who creates in, uh, a film like uh, like Sintel, they want to just distribute this to as many people as possible and some people among those people will then buy a DVD uh, but the distribution itself or the content will be not very uh, supervised. So they'll put it on Torrent, they'll put it on the net, on YouTube, and they'll try to get it to as many people as possible. Uh, the other companies actually try to kind of shrink wrap everything, so they say, well, you can order a, uh, a showing of the thing on Sky, or you can buy a DVD, or you can uh, have what else do they have. I think that's about it. Basically, just streaming to your home, uh, getting the, the copy, or maybe going to the cinema to watch that, but comes a few months earlier, and they try to, to basically ensure each unit, every watching of the thing is going to be charged, even though the viewing of the thing doesn't have to cost anything, not even bandwidth in some cases. Um, now with software, it's the same issue, where companies try to say, okay, how many people use an operating system? Well, that's the market we have, and each person who buys an operating system will have to buy this flat rate, or they can try and fix the price, or they can try to agree they don't compete too hard, or sell something for free, or give something for free. This, this is how business is done. And, and if you read some blogs like even uh, TechCrunch, they will tell you that they go to these rooms with these companies and these executives are doing it. Uh, sometimes you hear about price fixing allegations, especially in, in places like Korea, but it happens in the U.S. too. It's just the question of whether you catch these people doing that and ensuring they meet their investors' expectations by uh, setting rules for both companies not to compete, basically, or trying to ensure both of them exploit the customer as much as possible, the externality. Um, now, going back to this issue of software, if the companies want to try and ensure that each person who buys a piece of software for, uh, for writing documents or, uh, and for operating system pays a certain flat... Uh, flat fee, uh, then you have these free software uh, entities, it can be BSD or slash Linux, and you have all kinds of them, they have like 20, 20 fairly major uh, strands of free operating systems that do pretty decent things and can get you to a web browser and can have you do your banking and do your work processing and everything else. Now, these, these, these are actually threats in the same way that all these movements like Creative Commons and uh, pub even public domain. The, the question is, if something is public domain, how do you get to it? Uh, so one thing you have now is the web archive trying to share uh, with people all kinds of things which no longer have a copyright restriction, but they have to supply the bandwidth to do that. Uh, and these companies, uh, uh, which stand behind those front groups, the MPAA, RAA, uh, and they have these, you know, umbrellas of umbrellas of proxies of proxies and trying to distance themselves from the real issues, which is like uh, Warner and, and Sony and, and uh, EMI and these companies, which are actually the ones bankrolling these, 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 these bodies whose, whose uh, objective is to try to limit how much people can share things 
because if they can start them sufficiently, people will have to go through the supposed, you know, official routes, and they have to go back to the centralized way of getting information and getting co so-called content, as they call it. Um, so again, I, I I try to cover uh, I try to cover free software, uh, and if if the copyright uh, stories have a uh, analogous type of issue where companies try to pursue people and to create some kind of like a patent or a trademark that shuts down a website that shares music or shares music legally, uh, and it did happen before, then we can learn certain lessons and we can contribute both to both sides. Uh, they can contribute to try and um, advance free software. We at the free software side can actually contribute to them fighting against these big companies and explaining to people why they don't have to rely on these big companies and how they operate. Well, does any one other, other bit, and I'm sorry, it's my fault, My um, I had a few titles that I wanted to bring up and this one I've just missed off and it's probably the most important one, or certainly the most interesting one for me. And it was, um, I think last episode we covered the uh, Connect and the um, the bounty that was for the uh, the first person to create uh, open source drivers for it, and I think we had one claim of somebody already doing that. Um, the company in question that was offering the bounty for those that didn't listen to the last show was a company called Adafruit, uh, and they offered uh, some it was two thousand pounds or two thousand dollars, sorry, to uh, the first person who could produce open source drivers for the Connect uh, hardware. Now there was a chap who uh, who stepped up to the mantle but didn't wasn't uh, supplying it to Adafruit and there was some question over whether his claims were legitimate but uh, now it seems that uh, Adafruit has actually found somebody and already rewarded them I'm just looking at an article on the Adafruit website and uh, if we just bear with me I'll read out there a part of their press release um, this is in respect of the Connect. Uh, we know this subsidized commodity hardware can now be used for robotics, art, science education and more. For four, $150 it's loaded with tons of great sensors and cameras, now it's unlocked for creativity. Um, what they've done is they've donated £2,000 to the EFF on top of rewarding $3,000, so I keep saying pounds, to the gentleman who um, managed to produce the drivers. So um, it looks like uh, the Connect is going to be coming to uh, the desktop. Um, I believe that the person who did it is a Linux user. Um, I could be wrong there, and I'm just trying to double check. <clears throat> I think it was that uh, demonstrated on a. Uh, I think the previous guy. Did, did we have two guys here? A person who was working. Yes. The, the, right, yeah. Yeah. So the person it was, was yeah. trying to demonstrate this on the Windows now, Windows 7 yep. here, and this guy is basically trying to make this thing available for. I was very excited because the guy who actually achieved the full thing is making it mm -hmm. available for the GNU slash Linux desktop. Uh, yeah, it says it. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the thing I, I'm, I'm still trying to find out is how much the individual components of the Connect cost, because Microsoft can claim to be giving you a bargain or to subsidize the thing, but I'm not sure that's the case. I don't really know what the cost of making the thing is. I, I wouldn't like to guess. I mean, it, it's certainly it's certainly got a scope for a, a lot of other applications if it's taken away from its um from its 360 shackle, but whether people uh could find a usage for that in the real world on the desktop I don't know um, the gentleman's name is called Hector and yes it, he's, it says here on the website he's running all this on the Linux laptop um, his code works with OpenGL and but, doesn't even have an Xbox uh, so. Play, PlayStation 3 Sony was trying to cripple the platform I think at the time at least at the start of the uh, sales of the PlayStation 3 uh, they were losing money on each sale and the probably not very happy with labs trying to get these machines to work in the lab and costing Sony money basically because they don't get money from selling games. Um, what happens here uh, is uh, if if lots of people buy this device and it works fully with, and I don't think it works, I think it's a very, from what we know based on demos, it doesn't work too well. So I don't know if it's the program inside or if it's the hardware side, it's possible that the cameras don't capture things too well, or it's possible that the software that's processing the sensor information is not is not doing a very good job. But the thing is, uh, if if lots of people are going to download this thing and are going to then buy a device which Microsoft loses money on, and let's say you're talking about millions of people, Microsoft will have to raise the price to ensure it doesn't lose money on each of these devices mm -hmm. sold. 
And that basically means that we, as even Linux users, or uh, it's not just, you know, Linux is probably the proof of concept here, but we, you could do it to all platforms.